the Capita Reform Agenda series. Uh, and first off, I'd like to apologise for the delay. The PM has been in Brunswick switching on the NBN, where I'm confirmed that when it was switched on, lights lit up and it did switch on. Um, my name's Josh Funder. I'm the chairman of Per Capita. And we're delighted to have with us here today uh, the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, to both launch the Reform Agenda series, uh, but also to deliver the first of what we hope will be a series of significant policy discussions on Australia's long-term future. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, great help of CORE's in hosting this series and uh, in, the, in the launch today. By way of introduction, I wanted to say something about per capita, uh, uh, something about the need for uh, progressive policy in Australia, and then also some background on the Reform Agenda series itself. Uh, per capita is an independent, uh, progressive think tank, and we're dedicated to building a new vision for Australia. And at the core of that vision is the development of transformational ideas and that they can secure the long-term future of Australia. We demand that policies be morally grounded and economically sound. So in short, policies should be the right thing to do and they should work practically. What do we mean by progressive? Per capita seeks to identify the great challenges as well as the great opportunities facing our nation. A large part of our mission is to ask the right questions of our destiny, as well as help generate some of the solutions. Uh, we undertake part of our work uh, using the best available scientific and empirical research to understand the reality of change and not to deny it, to look forward and not back. We believe globalisation, climate change, social exclusion and economic productivity are among the key challenges facing Australia, but by no means the only challenges. Enhancing social inclusion, increasing workforce productivity and participation, equitably addressing climate change are not only the right things to do, they're the economically smart policies for Australia's long-term future. The progressive response isn't to stumble back to a time in our past when we felt more comfortable, nor is it to pr protest a single issue in isolation. The progressive response is to form comprehensive policies that can build a better future for all Australians. The per capita reform agenda series aims to identify the long-term challenges and opportunities for Australia. Today we ask you all to leave the 24-hour news cycle, to leave electoral campaigns, to leave gotcha politics at the door. Along the way in this series, we hope to identify some of those transformational ideas that will emerge, that can meet those challenges and that can seize those opportunities. It may be that those ideas will sit on the shelf until their time comes. It may be that they were needed yesterday. We don't presume to know what the answers are, nor do we presume to know whether they'll come from politicians, left or right, academics, journalists, activists. What we do know is that without a range of big ideas for our future, our future will be smaller and meaner. Our future will be better secured with a bottom drawer stacked full of morally grounded and economically sound ideas, big ideas for a big future. In terms of format, the Prime Minister's speech will be followed by a conversation with the Executive Director of Per Capita, David Hetherington. Time permitting, we hope to be able to field additional questions from the audience at the end. So with that, it's a, a, a great pleasure to introduce the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Julia Gillard, to launch the Per Capita Reform Agenda series and to present her perspective on long-term challenges for Australia. Thank you very much, Josh, for that introduction. Can I also acknowledge Per Capita's board, fellows and friends, as well as CORE for hosting us here today. And it's good to be with the per capita circle once again. And here with all of you, I would like to pay a particular tribute to the work of David Hetherington, his thoughtful, progressive leadership, which has driven per capita's growing success for four years now. In 2007, in your post-election memo to a progressive prime minister, you reminded us, successful government demands strategic vision policy experimentation, embrace of risk, and most importantly, an articulation of values. And in 2010, you wrote to me, and you said, a successful government delivers a small number of outstanding reforms each term. If you are able to kickstart productivity, unlock hard and soft infrastructure investment, and put a price on carbon, you will have played your part in a proud Australian tradition of progressive reform. Good advice at the time, and a year on from the election, a measure I'm happy to be tested against. 
because we've achieved agreement for a carbon price to cut carbon pollution and build a clean energy economy. Inked a once-in-a-generation reform to health financing, unlocking the quintessential soft infrastructure investment. Passed the flood levy to pay for rebuilding the nation's devastated hard infrastructure. And the long-term push to get productivity growth going again is informing every area of reform. From cutting taxes on low-paid workers and improving training and incentive to get into work, integrating enduring labour values and the economy's contemporary needs, through to the structural separation of Telstra, a real white whale which has escaped many reformers' harpoon in the past. And we're doing what needs to be done, a good solution, a regional solution, to the difficult problem of people smuggling. So, David, if you're adding a one-year report card to your memo, I'm sure you'll be kind. But the real test for government is not resolving issues on our to-do list or getting good reviews from commentators. I don't seek elegant policy solutions for their own sake. I seek better Australian lives. And I also seek to make enduring changes, changes which will command the support of the community as a whole in the years to come. So for policy to make a difference now and for it to endure for the future, it must be grounded in a deep and sympathetic appreciation of the way our people live. That's why the reform agenda for the government I lead is alert to the hope, but also the uncertainty felt by many Australians about the course of future events. We know the fundamentals of the Australian economy are strong, very strong. The Treasurer made some similar observations when he spoke at per capita following this year's budget. Growing employment, low inflation, interest rates still well below those when we came to office four years ago. Low public debt, a stable and liquid financial sector, $1.3 trillion under management in our super funds, a strong pipeline of mining investment. And we're in the right part of the world at the right time. Ours is an advanced and educated economy at the outset of a new Asia-Pacific century, poised for long-term prosperity through trade with the new Asia-Pacific middle class. The long-term story is one of long-term strength and I believe Australians know this, but we are not immune to the uncertainties and risk in the global outlook. There are patchwork pressures in our own economy. The natural disasters of the summer have cost us more than we anticipated, even in their immediate aftermath. Australians sense these things too and are making adjustments in their own behaviour. After the global financial crisis, there is a new understanding of economic fragility. If we dodged a bullet in the GFC, perhaps it's no surprise that when a car backfires, people duck. As the real economy globalises, so do economic and political sentiment. We can see these similar trends, indeed more sharply expressed, in the English-speaking world in Southern Europe and elsewhere. And while the fundamentals of the economy remain strong, it's also clear that things aren't the way they were in the 2000s. In the last decade, personal debt rose as people spent more than they earned, but enjoyed the lifestyle benefits. We had a long period of rising asset prices and rising superannuation returns. Ten budgets in a row, starting in 2001, cut income tax. In the last term of the former government, revenues were so high and grew so fast that the Commonwealth Treasury had its own group who joked their job was, as the budget was put to bed, to find a way to dump out the cash and keep the surplus down. Well, no more. Decades of reform and a well-managed stimulus did mean no descent into recession. But with that, 
no soft games in recovery either.